I'm Charles Baker. I was the uh, thermal lead on LRO, um, and I was intimately involved in the development of LEND from the thermal perspective from v pretty much the beginning. Uh, I was one of the first six people to have a Tim out with uh, the LEND team in Moscow and was able to develop a relationship fairly early on with the development team in Moscow. And like a lot of the other smaller instruments, um, they had one part-time thermal person and limited thermal facilities in order to qualify the instrument in Moscow. But a load of experience of building instruments for space in the past and being successful at it. LEND as an instrument is a neutron detecting instrument and in particular it detects neutrons um, that have interacted with um, hydrogen molecules. Um, Russia is kind of one of the two major um, centers in the world for building detectors of this type and this the LEND instrument is a rather unique instrument in that it has a collimated neutron detector. Um, the purpose of LEND is to detect uh, areas where large deposits of hydrogen on the moon can be found signifying water deposits. Um, in particular, it was able to find some of the uh, water deposits um, that later were proven to be water by the Elcross um, impactor. So, so LEN's importance to LRO is, is quite high because it definitively shows where water might be on the moon. The risk is with uh, foreign partners, particularly ones that are contributing instruments, is um, all, all the funding control is held um, on an entity other than NASA. So the qualification program that they've planned um, being funded by someone else is, is difficult to counter without um, personal relationships and expressing uh, risk in a way that, that, that it's commonly understood. Um, so, so, so the risk with international partners is that they underqualify their instruments and therefore potentially have failures in orbit or thermal vac or during flight due to a lack of qualification. The LEND instrument had a rather large collimator on the front of it with large thermal mass. So therefore, temperature trans transitions from hot to cold were fairly slow. Therefore, doing the full 12 cycles that we expect of an instrument prior to orbit or thermal vac would have taken a considerable amount of time. Um, it was beyond the the budget of the lead project to do that many cycles. Um, so there was an inherent risk um, with respect to the qualification lead due to lack of cycling and lack of exposing um, the instrument to the temperature extremes it's going to see in orbit with a little bit of margin. Um, therefore, there was an inherent risk um, to the electronics with LEND um, due to slight underqualification at the instrument level. We, we spent a lot of time negotiating with them and trying to push them to do more cycling um, and still ended up with, with some deficiency. Um, and found some problems when we uh, got to the orbital level thermal vac and uh, um, ended up having to do some workarounds and ultimately replace the instrument. My name is Charles Baker. I was the LRO thermal lead. With LEND, um, the way that we were able to build in the quality to the instrument to the extent that we were able to um, was through those personal relationships with the engineers on the other side. Through spending 
um, time there at, at the major reviews and prior to the major reviews and spending time there when they were actually testing the instrument, we were able to have influence on what they were doing and um, enhance their test program. We still didn't get um, the full amount of cycles that we had, would have hoped for, um, but we got more than they had originally baselined by um, talking to them about le um, things that we've seen in the past that were concerning about um, lack of qualification and lack of cycling. Um, with international partners, it's it's still two engineers or or two groups of engineers interacting, rather than um, huge institutions. And and from that perspective, you can still have some influence to to convince them to do the right things for the mission. They're as much committed as you are to ensuring that their instrument work. And if you present valid arguments to them and spend the time to make those arguments with them, you can build quality and and potentially prevent uh, future failures in flight. One of the things we did to, to mitigate is I actually spent quite a bit of time um, in Moscow prior to pre-environmental review and then also prior to thermal balance and thermal cycling of the instrument. Um, to work through some of the barriers and concerns that they had with respect to cycling. Tried to figure out, is there faster ways um, that, that we could cycle their instrument, still achieve what we are hoping to achieve, um, and yet still fit within their, their schedule and their cost boundaries, um, which were pretty much driving them. Um, w one of the mitigations that um, ICI actually built into their development of instruments and is built into Russian um, space hardware plans across the board is to have a fully functional second flight unit. Um, we encouraged this because we always felt that if there was a problem with the initial flight unit, we'd be able to use the second flight unit um, as a schedule mitigator for the mission. We, we actually took that second um, Russian unit and replaced the initial flight unit um, post-orbiter thermal cycling on the basis that it had been cycled um, the excess four times over in Russia. Um, we felt like that was the lower risk rather than the initial flight unit that had a failure during um, thermal cycling here in the States. The first unit had a um, failure of one of its detectors um, during our second cycle of orbiter thermal vac. Um, and once we saw that problem, um, there was a Tiger team put together between NASA and between ICI. ICI um, came up with a design fix to the second flight unit, implemented the, that fix, and then requalified the second unit prior to delivering it to us. With respect to personal relationships, our SMMA, Safety and Mission Assurance person, um, went to Russia at all the major reviews and, and, and prior TIMS and developed a relationship with the Russians, looked at their facility, looked at their processes, looked at their parts choices, and advised where he could um, how to best implement the mission design or the instrument design for mission success. My name is Charles Baker. I was the LRO Thermal Lead. Well, one of the lessons learned that we had on LRO and we had um, numerous instruments is we made sure that no one instrument was critical to the mission success of LRO. Any one instrument's data set could be reproduced by other instruments in the instrument suite. Um, this mitigated any risk to a single instrument failure during INT or during the mission um, from bringing the, the mission success um, uh, 
to a lower level. One of the lessons learned um, from LRO is we had heard prior to LRO um, that dealing with the Russians, they would be very inflexible um, and would present their process as is, and you would get no input whatsoever into what they were doing. What we found was quite the opposite, and, and we found found the opposite experience when we took the time to to meet as colleagues, discuss ideas prior to decisions being made. Um, the Russians were were very open to good discussion and and good insight um, in, in, into what were mission drivers, um, such as thermal testing. Um, so, so when you made the engineering case as to why something was a good idea, um, they responded um, not as an action item might have occurred from a design review, um, but more so from a, well, here's the plan, let's mark it up and let, let, let's go forward and let's do the right thing. Um, Often, if you just review instruments in, in formal settings, you, you almost shut that interaction down between discipline leads that, that, that's probably the most valuable. As the critical um, subsystems and um, safety and mission assurance interact with their counterparts um, on the Russian team, there was more of a camaraderie and ability to make a decision out of the limelight of reviews, which allowed the Russians to save face and, and have good discussion. Um, a lot of other cultures in official reviews must appear to have their story together and straight and perfect, and that's more important than doing what's technically correct. By, by having those interactions outside of reviews, you're able to influence what is ultimately presented at reviews and, and therefore have a bigger impact to doing the right thing um, along the way. So one of the lessons learned that we had is the primary um, Russian instrument, as I mentioned, failed um, during thermal cycling here at Goddard, um, and it failed, like, the likely cause of the failure was outgassing at temperature causing a corona effect um, across high voltage components within the electronics. Um, part of the difficulty of international partners is they don't present detailed design schematics to us for review, we might have um, been able to find the, the flaw um, in their process had we had better insight into um, exactly how they were building and how, how they were processing their boards, particularly in the high voltage area. Um, their testing also Somewhat without the column, some without the collimator, and some with the collimator, um, mass part of the the outgassing problem of the the collimator in that high voltage field. Um, so by by aiming to save a little bit of time in testing, they ended up not being able to uncover a flaw in Russia um, that otherwise would have been caught, and it was really the the, the test-as-you-fly slow process of the orbiter thermal cycling that uncovered the flaw and w allowed us to figure out um, the problem, go fix it on the second flight unit, install the second flight unit prior to LRO's launch.